Good morning, everyone. We're convening as the Marin County uh, Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Welcome. Uh, we're going to start with item 1A, approval of minutes of the meeting of November 13, 2018. I'll move approval. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board of Commissioners matters. I just want to call out one thing. Yep. Um, yesterday on um, the program KQED Perspectives in which um, residents write in and share a point of view or a commentary <coughs> on an issue of um, either local, personal, or regional national significance, there was um, a resident of Kentfield, a young lady named Alexandra Coe, was featured and um, she wrote a piece on, on housing insecurity and, and how a, chi a, a kid experiences housing insecurity in Marin County. And uh, that can be found um, online at KQED. And there's a, there's a written version as well as you can listen to her share it. Thank you. Seeing no one else, we're going to move to public open time. This is on items not on the agenda this morning. Uh, if anyone would like to come forward, and if you could shoot for three minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good morning. My name is Royce McLemore. Uh, Golden Gate Village is a national historic district, and it is the sister property, uh, as we know, of the Marin City, uh, Marin County Civic Center. The county of Marin has outgrown the Civic Center. However, the way the county addressed this issue was by buying property throughout the county to meet its growing needs. Just as it's incomprehensible to level the Marin Civic Center to build a larger facility, the same for Golden Gate Village in Marin City. Golden Gate Village is on, again, on the National Register. It's the sister property of Golden Gate, of the Civic Center, with the architectural overall by Frank Lloyd Wright and Aaron Green. In Marin City, it comprises of uh, our Headlands, one and two, townhomes, Ridgeway Apartments, single family homes, and Marin City is 200% more dense than Strawberry and 300% more dense than Mill Valley. The resident council and residents are not against development. We maintain and still maintain that affordable housing needs to be built in other areas of Marin like Strawberry, Ross, Kenfield, Mill Valley. There is a need to construct new mixed income housing elsewhere in Marin County and not at the expense of forcing African Americans out of Marin City and therefore out of Marin County. As the uh, Golden Gate Village will not be torn down and over rebuilt because affluent communities refuse to have affordable housing built in their neighborhoods. And I said this a few years ago, don't dump it all in Marin City when there was the big fight at Marin Wood. We're the only African American community in Marin County and as African Americans, and particularly uh, myself at being, uh, my parents came here my parents died in Marin City, and I'm here, third, fourth generation, and I claim it as my inheritance in Jesus' name. And with that being said, we as residents, we need our units redone, not torn down. We need them renovated. We, deep green renovation, making them energy efficient buildings. And that's what we are still pushing forward <laughs> wherever we have to end this platform. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Ricardo Moncrief. I'm the director of ESOGI, and I have some very deep concerns about the decision-making processes that go on at the, by decision-makers at the county level, even at the community level. Twenty-five years ago, I watched the systematic dismantling of land and asset ownership of uh, lands and assets in Marin City. It was systematically set up to change ownership, which it has, and uh, take away assets from Marin City, which it has. And out of all of the organizations, all the people who contribute on advisory panels, review boards, and everything like that, it, see, it, it, it become exceedingly clear that they're not listening to what the community members have to say. So I invented a new science. It's called advisory ology. And it's dedicated to why it is that all these panels, all these decision makers do not honor community voice. And, it's, and I've seen it at the equity, you know, when we try to hire an equity officer at the county. I've seen it when we try to have a, a staff the school with people who know, who have expertise in oppressed communities. And they were kicked to the curb. Uh, and it's, 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 it's more than a trend. It's a pattern that we have to live with. And we have to be able to find ways to honor the community voice, particularly about public housing, you know, which is, has these immediate needs, like Royce just explained, and they have to be taken care of. But the point being is that we've got to find some way where decision makers, like boards of supervisors, commissions, and things like that, really honor what the people in the community are saying because they have the expertise, they've been living there, and they can reflect upon the realities of oppression, suppression, repression, all of the pressions and whatnot. So uh, my strong, beyond strong recommendation is that you vet the cost-effective Method, uh, uh, presentations of public housing, also the incorporation of community land trust, which would save the historical preservation site and cure a lot of problems around community ownership of its own land. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak in open time? Okay, we're going to move on. All right, come on up. Um, I'm Tony Schroyer. I'm a Marin County na native, and I'm a friend of the Golden Gate Village, and I want to agree with what Roy said and the gentleman that spoke before. While driving up the 101, I see the nicely painted new roof of the Civic Center. Further south, the Frank Lloyd Wright sister high-rise buildings at Golden Gate Village are in dire need of paint and upkeep. You five politicians are clearly concerned about your office building the Civic Center, instead of helping those living in public housing at Golden Gate Village, many of whom are African American and of the protected class. You can change the course of direction that you have been, taken, been taking. Do you want to be remembered by this, the conditions at, uh, of some of the units at Golden Gate Village? Listen to the residents' council. Rehabilitate the units. Make them green. Be a part of history. Honor the Golden Gate Village community voice. Put the taxpayer money of 275000 to maintain the units instead of hiring yet another county consultant with our taxpayer money. HUD can take over managing the units and use the $3. million that is received by Golden Gate Village annually and become good landlords. Yes, I've seen the 2017 unaudited financials, $3.1 million from Golden Gate Village. Tonight, the county will be uh, talking about uh, just cause evictions. The county staff will be talking about alleged lack of proper and timely maintenance and substandard living conditions of rental units in the county from private landlords. Yet the five of you have been the very worst landlords of all. Do you see the hypocrisy in this? Revitalization is your word for gentrification. It's wrong. Our largest African-American community in Marin deserves to be treated fairly and not continually discriminated against by our county government. Let the residents decide what is best for them. 
And thank you, Royce McLemore, for our unsung, who's our unsung hero of Marin County and Golden Gate Village. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Board of Supervisors and Board of Commissioners and Marin Housing Authority. Uh, first of all, I want to say we are rebels with the cause. Um, and our cause is to preserve, historically preserve, and conserve the land for which it was made. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time or I would have played this song by Joss Jaffe, who is, was my tabla player when I studied Bonsuri. It's called Overcoming the Struggle and maybe you can listen to it. It's really about uh, everybody overcoming this divisiveness, coming together, to support uh, what this land was created for. I'm going to use the last two minutes to read this um, section. It's page 161. It's Marin City. It's from the book Vera, First Lady of Marin. Um, the biggest, sweetest land deal on the horizon in the early 50s was Marin City. It consisted of 360 acres of priceless real estate, a beautiful bowl, surrounded by steep hills just north of Sausalito. The view from those hill terraces is dazzling. The floor of the bowl is not flat, but slightly rolling, making it an attractive setting for a big shopping center, a high school, low-cost public housing, all the things Vera envisioned for it. Before the federal government took it over in 1942, through the instrument of the right to public domain laws, the area was occupied by a big dairy operation. In 1943, the Navy needed one more shipyard on the shores of the San Francisco Bay to build Liberty ships for the invasion of Japan. Richardson Bay at Sausalito was the last deep water waterfront left around San Francisco Bay on which to build. The federal government negotiated with Marin County with the dairy owners to take over the entire property. The plan was to build temporary housing for shipyard workers coming from the lower Midwest and the Deep South to build Liberty ships for the Bechtel Corporation. Blacks and whites, a potentially explosive mix of people in the Jim Crow climate, areas from which they came, during the war years lived peacefully side by side in Marin City. One grocery store, one community center, one school, the same playgrounds and the same public toilets served all. Almost no visible tension or resentment developed as long as the two races were equal in number and received the same pay for the same civilian war, war work. When the war ended, the whites fled. The blacks could not flee. The blacks couldn't go back home because mechanization of agriculture had taken place during the war. Field hands had been replaced by machines. That's the end of my time. You can finish reading it. Uh, it's on one page, 161. So thank you for listening. Maybe I'll read more afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mary Davis. I'm a lifelong resident of Marin County. I grew up in San Anselmo. I raised all my kids and grandkids here. I'm a nurse. I worked for 40 years. I've been blessed to be able to live in Marin City for the last 10 years. It is one of the most wonderful communities for all of us living there. And when I come up here today and I see all the work that's happening up here for offices and for buildings, in this huge big, look at this, we're in just one little part of this huge big room. It just doesn't seem fair to me that we're not getting our equal due. We just want to get, we like to have our units all fixed up so that we're all living well. You know, we're grandmothers, a lot of us, a lot of seniors. And it's just, you know, it's, I, I just, I've been listening to all this tributes to um, President Bush and they all keep talking about what a great American he was. And I just want you guys to just be good Americans and do, do right by us. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. We're going to move on to item 1D, Executive Director's Report. Good morning, Commissioners. I only have one item that I wanted to speak to on my report, and then I want to defer the rest of the time relating to um, 
the revitalization process to item number, item 1F. But in that one thing that I wanted to speak to, I wanted you to, to join me in recognizing a retirement today. Uh, Peter Chase is a maintenance worker. As a matter of fact, why don't we have Peter and the team stand up? So Peter is a maintenance worker who specializes in plumbing repairs. Prior to working with us, Peter worked for the New York Housing Authority, where he learned a lot about boilers, particular uh, master boiler repair. The Golden Gate Village High Rise have old boilers that provide heat through radiators that Peter has been instrumental in helping us maintain. We appreciate Peter's 11 years of service with us, as well as his over 30 years of service to public housing in general. We congratulate Peter on a job well done for his retirement, and we thank him for all of the wonderful things he's done to support the, um, the residents here in, in uh, Marin Housing Authority. There's a little quote that we have here. It says, in recognition of Peter Chase, our, our outstanding maintenance service to, for outstanding maintenance service to the Marin Housing Authority, thank you for making every repair count. We just want to recognize it. And with that, I have a token of our appreciation that says, Peter Chase, thank you for your years of dedicated service from the Marin Housing Authority. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you for Marin Housing hiring me. And there was a lot of love where I was working, and I appreciate my tenants, and I'm going to miss them. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And crew. You guys do a great job. That concludes my report. Sure. Yeah. I want to personally uh, acknowledge Peter. I was on the hiring uh, selection committee for him to be hired. And uh, there was a, a tie between he and another of our workers. And I just, I hate to see Pete go. And I hope the next worker that we hired at that time, because they're both very skilled men with the knowledge. Um, I hope you don't leave before your time either. We um, truly, 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 um, as residents, they do the best that they can do with what they have to work with, which is minimal. But they do the best that they can do. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to item 1E, request to authorize president to execute agreement with the county of Marin in the amount of $275,000 to support pre-development work related to the Golden Gate Village revitalization project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We move that you request that you um, support this, this item. Um, this $275,000 is, as mentioned, for pre-development. This is consistent with the contributions that the board has made towards um, preserving affordable housing in our county. You know, this is akin to the, the monies you made available for the landlord partnership. It's akin to the money you made, the grants you made available in the earlier stages of the redevelopment process as we did the community working group, uh, the establishment of the task force, and bringing in support that will allow us to make sure as we navigate a process to get into a redevelopment engagement that the uh, Housing Authority has all the expertise and the support it needs to make sound and accurate decisions. Yes.
A absolutely. So I, I want, and I'm glad she brought that up, Commissioner Sears. Th this is within the document. There was mention of consultants and organizations that we're working with, um, as it relates to our, our, our local community-based organizations. There is clearly an opportunity for those organizations to be a part of this process. What we're seeking approval on today is the, the, the monies to support what was already approved earlier on in the way of Keslowski, um, the Section 3, the lawyers and things. Yes, so absolutely, in this process, there's clear opportunity for um, other organizations. As a matter of fact, I've been in conversations with Performing Stars, which received a grant to do help support this work. And as I'm sure you'll hear when we bring up Michael's organization, the strength of any redevelopment process is having a very strong local presence. So it's, the answer is yes. Other questions, yes. <clears throat> What Section 3 speaks to is, is the hi local hiring of individuals when federal dollars are being used, particularly disadvantaged individuals. And what we're seeking to do through the Michaels organization, but also within the Housing Authority, is to create more opportunity for training, development, hiring, and job readiness, including women-owned business, uh, minority business, disadvantaged businesses, to create opportunities more for people who are who will be within the Golden Gate Village community to have opportunity to work and be a part of the development process. Thank you. Other questions? <laughs> Members of the public. Yes. Um, <clears throat> with this this money and I hear I know performance stars, they have a role, but the resident council is the official voice for the residents of Golden Gate Village. We've been fighting these, this so-called giant with a little pebble. Does this mean that we will have, be able to share in that monies as it relates for us to be able to do outreach to residents, to come to the various meetings all across the board? Is this the opportunity for us? Also, on, is, is that a yes or a no? We'll note that question. Uh, and I would really receive like an answer for that question because we get $3,000 a year to do what we do and that's basically putting out flyers for residents to come to meetings, et cetera. But if it's really some outreach door to door and floor to floor as the resident council, we want to be able to have funds to be able to participate and to be able to do that like the housing authority, it's called equity. We want some of that equity in terms of coming from the resident standpoint. As it relates to quickly on the section three question, I want again to be noted that this is not a new uh, concept at all. Marin Housing Authority engaged in section three business for over 16 years with women helping all people as we engaged in landscape management, the doing the maintenance for the buildings, the cleaning and, and uh, brush cutting for the other properties throughout the county. So it's not a new concept. Why, the question should be asked, why isn't the housing authority doing their due diligence and watching over the section three? We have landscape company that's working, but they're not checking to see how are they in terms of residents being able to replace people that, are mo that have moved on. We see people coming in and out, but we don't see anybody from Marin City. When asked to do uh, the laundry room business, which the resident council did for many, many years as another source of income, we were insulted by the housing authority to say, well, we could let you do two buildings. I mean, how would you feel? And you've been do, running a business, and somebody come to you and say, "Well, you could help. You know, you could do the. You could pick up the trash. That's what they offered. You could pick up the trash, 
when we, for 16 years, I ran a very successful, glory be to God, landscape company. But now you're going to tell me you can pick up the trash. So is it going to really be fair, or is it more lip service and hypocrisy? Good morning. I'm Felicia Gaston, and I'm representing the P Performing Stars organization, but I'm actually re representing a new form component of our organization called the Marin City Social Justice Group. And we did apply for a grant to the San Francisco Foundation so we can serve as a neutral uh, liaison between the Golden Gate Village Resident Council and the Housing Authority, so we would also be able to go door to door to share the information in, in a well-informed way to all the residents so they actually know what the Golden Gate Village resident plan is, what the housing authority plan is, and that they will be able to, to participate, to, to share their ideas. Um, they need to know the exact timelines. They need to know exactly what the resident plan is, Golden Gate B Village resident plan, what is the housing authority plan, and actually, I feel that you could be save some money by because the fact that we have received a grant already to do this work, to work again with Housing Authority, Golden Gate Village Resident Council. So why would you be spending some extra money with the Kowalski? And um, we would be in a more neutral liaison position to share the residents um, the information. So that's my. So I'm asking you to postpone a certain section on the agenda that deals with the communications plan with Kalaski and Associates. Thank you. Thank you. Well, why don't we get through the okay. comments and then we'll okay. take up all the questions and requests. Hi, my name is Aura Hathaway. I guess I did not introduce myself before. Um, I was at an, a most amazing meeting on Saturday, which involved a lot of movers and shakers in Marin City. We had no one there from the social justice group. It would have really been nice. I understand it was Felicia's birthday. Happy birthday. But um, we really do need to have all the voices at the table when we're visioning, especially if they're going to be representing, rep held themselves as a voice, an official voice for the people of Marin City to actually need to be coming to these meetings where they're meeting and being with people from Marin City. I have heard a lot of people say that they represent Marin City, but I spend a lot of time there and a lot of time at Golden Gate Village. I'm a substitute teacher at the school, and it's been a long, many, many years that I've actually spent a lot of time there doing many, many things. When Garavaglia Architect went through and did the HRE, the Historic uh, evalu HRE Review Evaluation, I went through with Allison all of those homes, and <laughs> I have a copy of all the pictures of the amazing uh, 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 place that is. Not just, the, not just the buildings, but the landscape, the views. Now, I... I I just want to suggest that we slow down in giving Marin Housing Authority another quarter of a million dollars. Um, to me, it is just spending bad money after worse. I mean, I, I feel like the money would be better spent actually to give it to the Golden Gate Village Resident Council and to give it to some of it to Marin City CSD, to the actual people that are doing the work there. They're going to the meetings with the people who have been officially elected. We call it a democratic society here, but I'm questioning whether this process is being held as a democratic process, even though we're in a place that was supposed to be an architecture for democracy. And, and, and Golden Gate Village also was a second architecture for democracy, designed by the same people in the same era to combat the very thing that we're actually still combating here today. That the rich oversee how the poor live. I suggest that instead of section three, we look at a different, uh, a, a different group of people to manage this property. Because once we get it out of the public trust 
and we knocked down some of these public housing units, and he said he wouldn't lose any, but we are losing any, some in all of, the, all of these proposals, and destroying an historic district that was created for the people who could move nowhere else, who helped to win World War II. Let us pray, because we really need to right now. Thank you so very much. Ricardo again. This Friday at the Soji Forum, it's open to the public, uh, we'll be addressing. What's it called? Isoji, I S O J I. All right. And we meet once a month, the first Friday of every month for the last 18 years. <laughs> but we take it on some very difficult issues in finances and trying to get money to flow into the community, particularly for the, or the county for depressed communities. We'll be talking about CDFI, which is a community development financial institution created by the national government to <laughs> drive money into low-income communities, such as a Community Reinvestment Act dollars, which in the course of uh, doing financial business in the county, these things have generally been denied. And uh, it's open to everybody. Uh, they are attached to credit unions, and these credit unions have the credit union we'd be dealing with are credentialed, the only credentialed CDFI in their area. And for anybody who has an interest in seeing how we can gain these type of resources that normally have been denied, now you invited Marin City Senior Center, it's 11 o'clock, and we feed you. You know, so, you know, come and uh, partake. Your suggestions, your ideas are all welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Good morning. Thank you. Happy holidays. Um, Damian Morgan, uh, Marin City resident, born and raised. Um, I want to highlight two meetings that uh, I attended last year. One. One meeting was about a year ago to this day, pretty close to a year ago, when Congress Huffman came to Marin City and uh, myself and uh, Royce and a few other residents gave uh, Mr. Uh, Huffman a tour of Marin City, of Golden Gate Village. We went to a few, few units and he, you know, we looked around and it was basically a tour of the property and a and couple units. At the end of this meeting, we met um, inside of uh, Golden Gate Village's um, Marin Housing Authority's office. And this is about a half hour, half hour meeting inside of the office. At the end of this meeting, Mr. Lewis Jordan himself looked at Jared Huffman, Congressman Huffman, and said, no buildings will be torn down. He told him that. He looked at us, he looked at Jared in his eye and said, no building buildings will be torn down. Secondly, so I hope that Lewis is still steering this ship towards that, no buildings being torn down. Secondly, uh, I was in a meeting six months ago, uh, about five months ago, it was at, um, on CSD's property, it was in the senior center. And um, this meeting was around uh, dinners with the CEO or dinners with Mr. Jordan himself. And I had, in the last year, I've, I've visited Alice Griffith Housing Projects in San Francisco a couple of times. They call it Double Rock, but that's kind of a nickname, but it's called Alice Griffith in San Francisco. In this property, they have a, um, a group that was hired. I'm not sure who hired them, but they prepare residents for what's coming. Now, I'm not sure what's coming here exactly to Marin City. I, don't, I hope nothing gets torn down, but I'm not sure. I'm not an expert. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not sure what's going to happen. But I, I asked Lewis in this meeting five months ago, what are you doing to prepare the residents for change? And Lewis said, we will soon hire someone, work towards getting someone in, in the community to work with the residents to prepare for change. What that change is, I have no idea. But I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, for the record now, are you hiring? Are we looking to work with the residents? Not five years from now, when change is at the door, 
What are we doing now? Today is not too soon. A lot of times when we have these meetings, talk, talk to people about these things, they go, oh, it's too soon, not now, not now. Why not now? Any other speakers on item 1E? And I know a number of the issues uh, teed up, which are all good, are going to be also discussed in 1F, the next item. But do you want to answer some of the questions? Sure. I am um, going back to the president of the resident council, her concern. Uh, we, we maintain that we have and we continue to work with the residents, with the resident council. Okay, let's, let's uh, respect everyone's opportunity. To Thru throughout this entire process, and I'll, I'll give a chronology as we go into item 1F, but we have, we continue to work with the resident council. We continue to work with the community. Um, there, there's been ongoing involvement from the very beginning, and it continues. To the last speaker's statement about buildings, the comment was no plan and we still have no plans. We're, we're working through a process. When it was suggested that no plans meant not at all, there was a immediate converse or call back to the resident council president, as well as contact with the speaker, articulating what the comment meant. There, there's no way that any of us can sit here and say, looking at a building, we can make a determination as to whether it'll stand forever, or based on what's going on, what's in the guts of those buildings that we can or cannot demolish. And so that was and continues to be my position. But my overall statement is working together. I had a conversation with performing stars before this meeting, clearly articulating that there was an opportunity, and there always has been and there continues to be an opportunity to work collectively. The developer that we're looking to have you approve today will speak to the strength of having a local partnership in this opportunity. Kaslowski and Associates has been working with residents from the, from the moment that we brought them on. So the notion of saying postpone the approval of their engagement, you've already approved their engagement. And they're doing a darn good job, and they're continuing to work with the community. So. I, I guess what, what I really need to say, I can commit to you as a commission and to this audience, that the Housing Authority would just continue to work harder and harder around this notion of communication and inclusiveness. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion uh, by members of the commission? Seeing none. I'll make, I'll make a comment. No, no, no the no. public uh, comment is over. Mm -hmm. I'll make a comment. No, we have not gotten oh, a 1F sorry, sorry, yet. No, I'll make a comment. I'm, I'm looking at 1E as really uh, funding from the county that's intended to support a variety of efforts here, yes. some of which are community outreach efforts, that, and all of these efforts should engage members of the community. Absolutely. Part of its community outreach efforts, there's Section 3 efforts, there's historic preservation and cultural recognition consulting services to make sure yes. that the housing authority has the right advice on how to handle the property going forward. So I look at this as well as developer consulting services. I look at these funds as intended to really make sure that the process is done right. Absolutely. And without funding, it's hard to do a process correctly or the best you can. Absolutely. At the end of the day, <laughs> we, we have a, a responsibility as we navigate this process to do what's in the best interest of this housing authority and what these funds are, are being used for, as Commissioner Sears said, to make sure that we're following the proper path, we're doing the right things. And if we had to rely strictly on HUD funding, we would not be able to sit here and have this conversation today. Other comments, questions? I believe we had a motion from Commissioner Simon. I'll second. <laughs> motion and second. Uh, the question's called. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That matter carries. <coughs> We're going to move to item 1F. Request to authorize the executive director to negotiate and execute a contract with Michaels Development Company 
uh, pursuant to the RFQ Master Development Partner for Golden Gate Village. Mr. President, we're excited to bring this item to the Commission today. MHA staff, resident, community partners, and consultants have worked diligently to develop a comprehensive and inclusive process. That process dates back to the establishment of the guiding principles we, where this board adopted, I want to say back in 2009, that clearly spoke to making sure there would be no displacement, spoke to resident involvement, preserving marineship. Um, from there, a community working group that was established, I want to say in 2015, where we brought in residents, other stakeholders from the communities, business, government, education, to really start to articulate what a vision for revitalization would look like. From there, two options were, were being considered. Um, this year, the two options were being considered, and a task force was formed to identify a consultant that could help the housing authority and the community go through what became known as the feasibility study. In January of this year, the commissioners direct the housing authority to put together a solicitation to bring a developer in to assist in the process that was recommended by the feasibility study. In the process of developing this request for qualification, MHA was inclusive in its approach. It sought, it sought feedback and, and recommendations from the community, sought feedback and recommendations from the um, residents, the resident council. So my, my ongoing theme here is that throughout this process, we've been inclusive. You know, we, we've set the development of the RFQ before it hit the street, was presented to the resident council, was presented to other stakeholders in the community. Um, today, we are at a place where we're ready to bring that recommendation forward. Um, and, and the, what I'd like to do now, as I've gotten through somewhat of a history, I wanted to bring um, Naomi Burns up to the to the to the um, the desk. Naomi works for EJP Consultants, and this is a consulting firm that has helped us helped us navigate through the RFQ process. As Commissioner Sear said a moment ago, these steps of bringing in technical assistance are necessary to ensure that our methodology is precise and inclusive. Naomi's going to just walk briefly through the process of the RFQ. Good morning. As Lewis mentioned, my name is Naomi Byrne, and I'm with EJP Consulting Group. We are a consulting firm that was brought on board by the Marin Housing Authority to help in the facilitation of the procurement process for developer partner for Golden Gate Village. As Lewis has mentioned, a significant amount of work has gone into this procurement process even prior to EJP being brought on to assist. Uh, our portion really started in July of 2018, where we worked with the Housing Authority to draft the Request for Qualifications, or RFQ, for the developer partner for Golden Gate Village. And this RFQ process included significant input from staff, board members, residents, community stakeholders, um, and other advocacy groups within the community. We were also very clear in the request for qualification process to ensure that it incorporated the guiding principles, the community working group report, the feasibility report, community objectives, and other planning documents that the Marin Housing Authority, Marin Community, and Golden Gate Village have developed over the last several years. The request for qualifications was issued and published for release on August 15th with a deadline of October 1st for statement of qualifications. Five statement of qualifications were received by the deadline and all statement of qualifications were reviewed and deemed as responsive to the basic requirements of the RFQ. And then the statements of qualifications were provided to an evaluation committee um, that I'll discuss in a later slide. Um, it is important to note that initially the Marin Housing Authority identified four statements of qualifications that were received. However, during the course of the evaluation process, we discovered that there was a fifth statement of qualification that was received timely and 
based on the fact that it was received timely and deemed responsive, it was included in the evaluation process. The evaluation committee initially was comprised of nine members, five Marin Housing Authority staff members, two Golden Gate Village Resident Council leaders, as well as two community members. Um, as we went through this evaluation process, two of the committee members were unable to complete the entire evaluation process for personal reasons, so the evaluation committee was then amended to be seven members, four MHA staff, two Golden Gate, the same two Golden Gate resident council leaders, and one community member. We requested and received from all evaluation committee members as well as staff members and related consultants any conflicts of interest be disclosed. There were no pertinent conflicts of interest that were identified. We looked at a number of criteria for the statements of qualifications, and again, this evaluation criteria as part of the statement of qualification was reviewed by the MHA staff members, board members, and um, other stakeholders. It included management capacity, the evidence of the ability to perform the work, experience, experience with past for, uh, projects similar in scope and nature to the Golden Gate Village, development, project approach, which was really just a visioning exercise that was requested in this request for qualifications. Um, it is very important to note that we were very clear in the request for qualifications that the visioning exercise or the project was approached was just an idea, that it was not a final approach, and that any approach for the Golden Gate Village project would only come at the end of the planning process, which would be the first step after any authorization by the council to approve award of this project. Financial experience and capacity, ensuring that the development partner team had the ability to not only obtain financial commitments for a project, but also had the internal financial capacity to be able to manage this. Human capital, which was how you are going to work with the residents of Golden Gate Village to ensure their participation in the process for planning as well as any future development. The Section 3 plan, which has been discussed um, by Mr. Jordan. And then the second phase of the evaluation process also included business terms. And these were proposed business terms that came from the different proposers um, to see which of those terms would be most advantageous to the housing authority. The process itself included several steps. The first step of the process was to look at every statement of qualification and evaluate for both completeness and responsiveness. And as noted before, all five qualification statements were deemed as complete and responsive. The second step was to evaluate each of the statements of qualifications and determine if they were within the competitive range. Uh, what that means is if there was a reasonable expectation that they could have been awarded. Um, after the second round of interviews. Four of the five statements of qualifications were deemed competitive and moved on unto the step three, which was where the proposing firms were then interviewed and rescored. In addition to the interview process, the evaluation committee had the opportunity to develop questions for each of the specific firms that were responded both in writing and in oral uh, and orally and provided uh, to the evaluation committee prior to the final interview. At the conclusion of the interview process and the rescoring process, the evaluation committee then came to a consensus on the final recommendation that was made to the executive director. The evaluation committee, after all these steps, ranked the four statements of qualifications as noted above. The Michaels organization had a, a average cumulative score of 82, John Stewart Company and Bridge 79, Marin City CDC and Related California 78, and McCormick Baron Salazar 70. Um, after discussion by the evaluation committee, a consensus again was reached that the Michaels organization was the highest ranked proposer and then recommended to the housing authority who deemed them to be the most advantageous to the housing authority for purposes of awarding a development contract for planning and free development work as well as development. So at this time, the Housing Authority is requesting board approval to enter into negotiations with the Michael Organization for the redevelopment process 
of Golden Gate Village to include the initial planning process as well as potentially depending on the results of that planning process, the development process subsequent. <coughs> Are there any questions? And hopefully I didn't go through that too quickly. Mr. Chairman, prior to entertaining questions, I'd like to um, introduce the Michaels Group. I'd like to have Keisha Bowler, Vice President of the Michaels Group, to come up. And uh, Keisha, maybe you can have the team stand and say who they are. Or, well, before we do that, let's get our technical part here together. There we go. Good morning, my name is Keisha Blaware. I'm with the Michaels Organization. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself and my firm uh, today. I've got uh, my team with me, if folks could just stand. We just wanted to show you all that we are, you know, thoroughly excited for the recommendation. We're committed and uh, have a very strong local presence here to work with the community to move through this process. Thank you. So just I'll give you a brief uh, introduction of the Michaels organization. We uh, have been around for 45 years, uh, started with our founder, Mike Levitt, who is still our chairman today. We're a family owned business. And our mission is to really lift lives wherever we build and manage. It is more about the people than about the real estate. So I've thrown up a, a whole bunch of numbers here that uh, can describe uh, who we are, but I think the most important number up there is 145,000, and that is the number of residents who will be sleeping in homes that we have developed or managed uh, this evening, and we take that responsibility very seriously. Uh, we serve families, working families, students, military families all across the nation. Uh, we are nationwide from Hawaii to Maine. We've got about 7,000 uh, homes here in the state of California. So I just want to uh, highlight that we are an expert in public-private partnerships uh, from the founding of our company to today through various branches of government, including HUD uh, and military services, as I mentioned before. And so we bring uh, national expertise here to Marin to assist with the redevelopment of Golden Gate Village from the old Hope Six Days through a variety of mixed finance uh, solutions. We have that expertise and can bring that to you. My boss, actually, Milton Pratt, uh, sorry he couldn't be here today, but he was a former regional administrator at HUD. So the depth of our knowledge uh, is extensive. But we know that uh, we can have a variety of experiences across the nation, but what happens in Marin is unique. And so we are really looking to the community to be our local experts. Um, having local participation is key to any success. Just in the few minutes that I've been here, I hear how valued uh, Golden Gate Village is, how important it is to the residents, and what a long history it has. And so we are committed to an extensive uh, community outreach effort and listening to the residents, listening to the Board of Commissioners, Listening to the Housing Authority staff is a number one priority for us. Uh, and offering support through Section 3, through relocation, to really uplift uh, the residents as we transform the physical real estate. Uh, we have extensive experience with Section 3, promoting careers, not just jobs. Mr. Jordan spoke about job readiness. Uh, any revitalization program will take multiple years, so we want folks to be ready to take advantage um, of those opportunities and also have economic uplift through this process. And also want to mention a strategic partner that we have, Better Tomorrows, which has an award-winning 
uh, outcome-driven social services program for residents that we'll be bringing here to Marin, working with other local service providers uh, to support residents through this process not only through the revitalization, but beyond. We really hope to become a part of the community. We know that we're new now, um, but we really hope to be embraced and become uh, a longstanding and good member of the community. So just you know, wanna thank you for that introduction. It's really about uh, the residents and the people that live there. Uh, social impact is really what drives us in all that we do. For questions, so thank you. Thank you. Questions from the commission before we go to the public. Yeah, so I, I, I have a statement, and then I'll get, I will promise to get to a question. Sure. So I was uh, very impressive materials in your packet, and I really appreciate how thorough uh, the materials were, and really the scope of what you do. And just a couple of things that that jumped out of me, out at me, and I, I think Mr. Mims is here, and it, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, and there was mention of your past work focusing on energy efficient rehabilitations of existing buildings, and I'm very excited about that expertise uh, that would be brought to the team. Um, there's also a mention of really, it says central in the vision is a focus on existing residents. Could, nothing could be more important than that, so I appreciate your, what you've said about collaboration. Uh, and along those lines, there was mention that you envision working closely uh, with the Marin City Community Development Corporation. I think that's extremely important. I know the CDC was involved in a separate application. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous amount of talent in this community, both through the CDC and through our other organizations that I'm, I'm sure you're learning about yes. and will learn more about, and uh, just hugely important uh, for any community endeavor. And then I noticed the Michaels Organization Educational Foundation. I wonder if you might say something about that because I thought that was a very exciting aspect <coughs> of your social impact work. Sure, that's something that we're very proud of. Uh, again, it's with our founder, Mike Levitt, and his wife, Pat. I've started an educational foundation where uh, residents and Michaels uh, staff members can apply for scholarships to support uh, educational endeavors, whether that be vocational or college. And for every dollar that we raise, uh, Mike and Pat match two dollars. So since the 90s, we've contributed seven million dollars to support our residents uh, in their educational efforts. Fantastic. And I, and I do have a question. I noticed that there was a, a, a preliminary sort of drawing, a sketch of the property. Mm -hmm with ideas of where buildings could be added or how buildings were treated. I'm assuming this is a very preliminary, there's not a plan here, right? And maybe you want to address this, Lewis? Yes, Commissioner, no, there is no plan. I yeah. think as, as we looked at the RFQ, we had to give each uh, submitter an idea of what we're looking at. You know, the fact that we don't want to move people out. And uh, so you're absolutely right. Um, I, I mentioned that we don't want to um, displace people. Um, we just have a, it's a landscape. It's a, a blank board. And in, in looking at the requirements around the RFQ, each submitter came up with thoughts, vision, and ideas on what they might do. And I think that Keisha would say that, that they're not born or wedded, if you will, to this process of what's on paper a lot of what can and will be done will be flushed out through a community process. Did I say that? Yes, you did. I might just add that that's exactly correct. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of different uh, entities that will have to approve the process from the county itself to the historic preservationist. Mm -hmm. But I will say it is our intention to have a build first strategy and no mandatory offsite displacement. That is our goal, that is our intention. Mm -hmm. um, but as Mr. Jordan mentioned, we have to see how the actual process plays out. Thank you. Yeah, I've got a follow up uh, to that and thank you for teeing up that issue. Um, in fact, this commission has stated a policy to achieve no displacement. Right as part of the revitalization project. So if you could elaborate on how you've approached that issue in other projects mm -hmm. and how you see uh, that vision being fulfilled in this particular case. 
Sure. So we've, the Michaels organization has been involved in public housing redevelopment in every iteration, shape, and form, uh, you know, from uh, on-site uh, rehabilitation. We did uh, several hundred units in Hawaii where we set up floors of hotel units so that we could temporarily move residents into these hotel units while we were working on rehabilitating their units as they moved back and went through, you know, kind of a process as we got through all of the units. We've, uh, you know, been involved in, you know, places where Chicago, where residents were offered uh, relocation offsite and, and waited for the whole community to be re redeveloped. What I'm working on uh, now in Los Angeles is uh, Jordan Downs, where we were fortunate to have vacant land to build units first. And so new units were built, residents moved over, uh, and then those units were demolished and became the construction site for the next phase. So we have a lot of different iterations, different things that we can do um, to ensure that the community remains intact and that folks are not uh, forced to leave with any um, redevelopments, you know, using RAD or Section 18 Demo Dispo, residents are given options. You know, we can't mandate what families decide to do through the uh, rehabilitation process, but we will strive to make sure that uh, we will have as many opportunities as possible for the community to remain intact and for folks to stay on site. Then on the uh, human capital plan, um, I concur that um, it's promising how you've outlined some of the steps you'd like to accomplish. I would throw in a pitch for apprenticeship programs uh, as a way of, of um, developing our local workforce and opportunities uh, in that regard as well. Further questions at this time? Yeah, um, yeah just quickly, I'm, I'm I think we, we're relying heavily on the recommendations of the evaluation committee and the process that you went through. And um, I gather from um, going through the materials, we actually had some, some really, really very responsive and robust responses. So I'm just Absolutely. wondering, you know, at, at a lay level, what really put Michaels over the top beyond the, the, the numbers? I mean, what differentiated Michaels from the other qualifiers? It, it's experience working with public housing. That was really a big one. When you, and I shouldn't say just public housing, but it's experience building affordable housing, looking at its military housing, its public housing. It's, it's strong concept around the community aspect of things. Uh, we, we were moved by the $7 million of scholarships. You know, we were moved by the notion that this people first process um, is something that's at the forefront of the work they've done. They've done. Uh, I'm, I'm uniquely aware of that work around the country. You know, as I sought suggestions, recommendations, um, and feedback from my peers, you know, highly, highly reg uh, regarded. And to the point you made, Commissioner Rice, you know, it was, it was pretty close. The other, there were some, some very uh, important aspects of the other, of the other uh, proposals. As a matter of fact, when the evaluating committee came back and said, housing authority, you have a really tough decision to make. You know, the, and, and so things like their, their capacity, the financial capacity, that's another thing. So there was a number of, of items that just stood out that, um, that, you know, the housing authority felt that this, and still feels that this is the organization that can move us from this idea of what we want to do to a very strong position of revitalization for this community. <coughs> and, and I'd also like to, to echo what you said, that there was a very robust evaluation process, that there were discussions on each proposal that was received. Every committee member was able to identify any concerns, strengths, weaknesses that they had with the various proposers. Decisions made by the evaluation committee were only made after discussion and after consensus agreement. Um, so it was a very, I think, very thorough, very robust discussion process. 
uh, and a very, very uh, good job done by the evaluation committee. Several members who are here today, including your resident council leaders and uh, Ms. Royce and Ms. Mary, as well as uh, some of the community members that were involved as well. And Commissioner, if I can just add one more thing, you know, throughout this entire process, um, the, the Housing Authority and its efforts to work with the community around being in inclusive and, and, and collaborative, that's something we continue to try and get better at. If you think about a lot of the comments that come forth to the podium, really speak to how are we going to be a part of this process uh, in making that final decision around whether we should pick Michaels or not. They're better tomorrow's group. This really had a strong history of that inclusive process. And then understanding that, as, as Ms. Bulwer mentioned a moment ago, every engagement is a unique engagement. So looking forward to the Marin County version of Better Tomorrow is something that also you know, helped us lean towards this notion of being, of um, selecting the Michaels group. And if I could add there, as I'm looking at these materials, the better tomorrow is perhaps that's only one aspect of its focus, but it, it, it appears to really focus on seniors and senior needs in the community. Is that right? And I think that to me is a very important piece of what's being, what was presented in your package. Yes, yes we definitely have a breadth of experience uh, and have expertise working with seniors as well. So we want to provide uh, services for all residents. Right. Okay, we're gonna go to the public now. Um, how many folks would like to speak on this item? Okay, come on up. Uh, let's try to keep it within three minutes as always. Uh, yes, equity. Number one, uh, as it relates to, um, no one has mentioned how long this whole process is gonna take. That's number one. Number two, uh, the issue of conflict of interest. We had to sign where we had no conflicts of interest and was asked, did Lewis Jordan, did he have to sign the same thing? This whole, how Michaels came about, and I have Mary as my witness, um, we had gone through the process and then, oopsie, their proposal appeared. I told Mary, I was on our way to go through the process, I said, Mary, this is going to be the one. They're going to select it the highest, and in the end, it's going to be the one. That's before we even got up there. And lo and behold, they found it. And like I said in front of to our little group, this process is rigged. Mary's words that it smelled like fish. Nothing as it relates to Michael's, because you weren't a part of it. This is Marin Housing Authority at its best. We talk about equity, being partners, and again I say, will the resident council be able to have an office space, a place where we can have meetings ourselves and talk to the residents? We understand that Bridge the Gap has a a uh, uh, month-to-month month lease, why can't we have our space if you're really talking about equity? Now, as it relates to this whole concept of, again, I say like I started off, this board has an opportunity, even though you're not listening, but in the end, you're going to be made to listen to what is being said. We're not going anywhere. Now, here they talk about green renovation as residents, we need green re uh, renovations right now, not two, three, four, five years by the time you get out of federal court, what have you. We want it done, and we want it done when we need it done. Now, we're facing a winter where I could close my door and look right outside. We need weatherization. We need these things that can be free to the agency done for us as residents now. But like I said, y'all could bring in millions of dollars, consultant on top of consultant, and will spend mucho money to try to deny us our rights as renovated properties now. But thank God for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Bless his name. Because we're going to fight. No, I take that back. He said, be still and know that I am God. So from this instant forward, 
You've been so noticed from the Holy Ghost, straight from the heavenly sanctuaries. And I'm going to wait on God for you, each and every last one of you. You can ask Charles McGosh, and God rest his soul. Hal Brown, your old boss, God rest his soul. All of those, Al Fleming, God rest his soul. Many. Dan Knackerman, God rest his soul. Barbara Collins, God rest their souls. You don't see them. So my God said, hey, you, you're spreading yourself like a green bay leaf. But one day I'm going to look and you won't be there. And I give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. Because it's his fight. He's the one that blessed us as black people to live in Marin City. And he brought us there. And only he himself is going to be able to move us. But where our rights are going to be preserved. We're going to live like the rest of Marin County lives in efficient buildings. We have that right. And quit being racist. You talk about Donald Trump. What's different? Now search yourself. What's different as you relate to black people and people of color? Laura Hathaway, um, I wanted to just comment on a few things that Mr. Jordan said. First of all, some of the most important things that were done in this county were done by people who were not paid. They were called rebels with a cause. And they got parks, they got malt, and guess what? They even got Marin City by going to Washington, D.C. because it wasn't this county that was willing to do that. So if we have to go to Washington, D.C., mark my words, we will. Secondly, I want to make a comment about the process. I asked in writing before the end of the time to put an application in for this RFQ. If we could have an extension so that we could get folks that had worked on the original PNA to give the original 16 million, which we believe is originally a correct and need not be ballooned into 63 million with people like California Housing Partnership. Now, I spoke on Saturday about the difference between someone who does high-end carpentry and someone who works for Habitat for Humanity. I know that because that person is my brother. He chose to work for Habitat for Humanity after realizing that there are so many people in this county that have so much money to do just anything they want, but there are so many people without a home. Again, I want to say that this process was rigged in the sense that I believe one of the applications was sent in by CDC. Now, if you're talking about Section 3, you would have really thought about hiring people from Marin City. The CDC would have been a good choice. And also, the resident council, I want to say that there are more monies that come in besides HUD. There's stimulus money, there's all kinds of uh, application and grants, there's cap and trade funds, there's, there's a ton of way to bring money into Marin City and for Golden Gate Village. And in the residence plan, we've done that. Now we had to, it was like pulling teeth to get Lewis Jordan uh, with the RDJ to actually put a website, Future for GGV, in which the resident council's plan was presented. We've already done that. Thank you, Felicia. We don't need you to do it again. What we need is for the people who have been duly elected, you call yourselves a democracy here. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the A.A. A. Milne film when the father says you shouldn't hold your fork in your, your knife like that. Someone could fall through the roof and land on it. So I'm laughing at myself because I am quite English. And I would say tickety-tonk, but I think we need to keep going and really find some heart within ourselves to realize that people at the very top are always going to find a way to spend money at the very top. Excuse me. These people's application came in weeks after everybody else was considered. And this is not a fair process. I've been here from the beginning when we asked at a very long time ago, four years ago. I'm no more time. I just need a little more time to say this. In a closed session with Louis Jordan and our strategist who died suddenly, strangely, last year, Risa Jenkins, with Royce McLemore, with Bernadette Stewart. She was in the room. When we said, will you join onto our plan? 
We have a green plan. I love green. I love Marin City because it stands up for preservation and conservation in this small little watershed that cannot accept any more development. Let's be real. And Louis Jordan said, no, I can't do that. And so we said, will you please not stand in our way? And he agreed. I would like him still not to stand in our way because we are rebels with a cause. We are going to our next brick, which is getting funding. If you watch that historic preservation, if you watch that hearing, Lewis paid a lot of money for architects to come and fight. And the SHPO people said, shame on you. You should know that these buildings are worth a lot, and they have integrity, and they're worth preserving. Shame on you, Lewis Jordan, again, I say. My name is Josh Barrow. I think most of you know me, but uh, I'm a Marin City resident, and I've been participating in that long history that Lewis uh, referred to with the various uh, working groups, task force, et cetera, including the most recent where we um, agreed on the requirements for this RFQ and then scored the, uh, the uh, respondents. Uh, I originally stood up to elaborate on uh, Katie Rice's question of you know, what, what separated uh, Michaels from the rest. And I wanted to share that uh, really it was, I was impressed at four of the five applicants and felt at the end of this process that the scoring was so close uh, that it would be reasonable for the housing authority to consider any of the top two or three. Um, I also learned a lot in this process about the importance of the developer um, I didn't really have an appreciation for that before and the various things that they would need to bring to the table to make a project of this magnitude successful. Um, and I thought the respondents, particularly the top three, were fantastic in their proposals, in their experience, and their ability to get a project like this done. Uh, and that's reflected in the scoring. Um, I also know that we had a lot of dialogue around local organizations like the CDC, a lot of dialogue around Section 3, a lot of dialogue around engaging the community, and particularly the residents. Uh, and I think that was really reflected in all three of the top proposals. Uh, for me, uh, what set some of my scoring apart uh, was the proposed partnership structures with the Housing Authority, which was a small piece of this uh, <coughs> RFQ, um, but I think an important one. And I was really impressed by the way Michael's proposed to partner with the Housing Authority um, structurally and financially. And so if, if you have a chance to review that aspect uh, of this process, uh, I would draw your attention to that. Um, in my remaining 50 seconds, I will kind of respond to what I heard. Having firsthand participated in this process, it was uh, unfortunate and a little confusing at first to see a fifth submittal that was misplaced. Um, and uh, that circumstance uh, allows itself to a lot of uh, theory. Um, I did not want to score another one or come back and interview another one, but I'm glad I did. Um, in that process, I scored everybody lower in the first round just reading their paper, and everybody we interviewed impressed us more. Uh, and so I didn't feel I was participating in a rigged process. Uh, and I was uh, uh, grateful to have a voice in the process. So, thank you. Thank you, Josh. Come on up, folks. Uh, Tony Schroyer again, friend of Golden Gate Village. Um, with regard to the Michaels presentation, the company talks about listening to Marin Housing Authority as their number one priority. Once again, the residents are not being listened to and not being heard. And you did say that you said, see, when it talked about displacement of residents, you did say, quote, we'll see how this plays out. And Damon, I want to thank you and applaud you for calling her on that because the residents do not want to be displaced. And you left it very open-ended, which is very, uh, very uh, concerning. But maintain the units now. These are photos of the deplorable conditions of Golden Gate Village. These are photos of children that are living in squalor. The children and the poor 
should not have to live like this, and they are, and it's shameful. And you five supervisors have the authority and are in the position to help the children, to help the poor, to help the protected class, to help the African Americans, and you're not doing that. Help them now. Not five years from now. I have some technical questions I'd like to see if I can get answered or whatnot. Um, you know, one of the things that the community has lost over a period of time is trust in our leaderships, uh, leadership. And there's no program or, pro or, or process that says we're going to get out here and help build trust from our residents and, and our leadership to people who make the decisions around social services, around school, around equity issues that confront us on a daily basis. Uh, what I'd like to ask, you know, and you can, yes or no, who will own this land after it's developed? Just tee up your questions and then we'll get to them after the public Well, comment. that's a question I'm putting on the table. Okay. Who will own the land? Duly noted, so wrap okay. up your remarks and then well, more okay. questions. Uh, okay, please. We're not going to engage in a dialogue. Just well, well the, question, the question has been forwarded to you. I okay, we, but I, we've I, noted I also it and would we'll, like to we'll know address it after, after the public comment. Period. Okay, I would also like to know, has any of the... Um, Candidates for redevelopment work with community land trust. And uh, you can't tell me that HUD cannot cede its lands over to community interest and whatnot. So I'd like to know if there's any examination of the impact of community land trust as far as community ownership, a local design of what they want from from the from the development um, and also while the point is you have to be really aware that Marin City is saturated with human services you know from every aspect you can think of and and if you look I hope you really vet the amount of social services and the disruption of all in existing services that are ongoing and as we try to build a, a, a a equitable base around how do we deliver services and try to get a holistic picture of what what how human services impact the community and its human development this is this is critical because we lose a lot of momentum by organizations coming in coming out making promises you know withdrawing and not delivering the systemic change you know that residents really need I hope you can take take that in consideration. Uh, I have more questions, but I'm gonna close my book and ease off. And please feel free to forward any additional questions. Welcome. Thank you, and uh, good morning. My name is Walter Jones, and it was my pleasure to be a member of this task force and um, brought on um, as early as the period for examine the feasibility of this project from start to finish. Uh, I scored uh, four of the proposals and um, read the fifth one. And unfortunately, I was out of state and unable to be here to physically uh, um, offer my score. An outstanding proposal. And the impressive process here is that it was completely transparent. We saw each other's faces, we heard each other's voices, and we read and we scored independently. The attractive feature of, all, of the two or three uh, front runners was the private-public partnership, the presence of a foundation, the inclusion of public money, the availability, particularly of the housing and community development block grant dollars, where I have a great passion for its relationship in basically community redevelopment. I also thought it incre incredibly important 
and what I and a few others in the area call asset-based community development, where you not only inventory the principal characteristics, capacities, and assets of its citizens, its organizations, and institutions, but you engage them into the redevelopment process. I am convinced that Michaels can get this job done. I'm also convinced, because of my uh, involvement in this process from start to finish, that it was open, it provided opportunity for every aspect of the community, incredibly inclusive in all of its observations, critical in the examination of the capacity of each developer, and convinced that going forward, that the base of this community would be completely sound if on the ground local organizations are intricately involved in the development of this project. I think that the interest of the executives to sustain the capacity of these, of these facilities for the existing residents, but yet look at the high probability of addressing those who are in need of affordable housing and not yet uh, a part of the housing authority from Duran City. So the addition of a different unit was extremely uh, interesting to me also. And with that, uh, I, I will be around for the balance of this meeting and available for any questions. Would anyone else like to speak on this item? Okay, it doesn't look like it. Uh, we had some questions, Director Jordan. Um, I don't know if you're in a position to answer those now or uh, need additional information. I thought you could also directly comment, um, and we heard it from a couple of the speakers as well, from your perspective though, in answering to the concerns about the process, um, the allegation of uh, sure. conflicts of interest, rigging, uh, why don't you tackle that head on? Yeah, sure. Um, the It was as indicated in the slide show, and I guess being more specific, the proposals all came in within the allotted amount of time, and one of the proposals was, was misplaced. It's as simple as that. I uh, happened to um, get a call saying that we found this proposal after the process had started. And that was, it was interesting because simultaneously, someone from Michaels mentioned to me, did you get our proposal? And I'm like, well, no, we didn't get a proposal from you. Well, sure you did. And within a matter of hours, it was determined that this proposal came in. It was a box of proposals came in and were actually sat in a room that it shouldn't have been in. We acknowledged it. We pulled it out. The, my procurement person contacted the scoring team, said this is what happened. Was it embarrassing? Yes, it was. Did we put processes in place to make sure it wouldn't happen again? Yes, we did but it was simply a human error. We pulled the proposals out, um, and I say we because throughout this process, it's very important that you all know, I have been hands length away from this. In the scoring of the RFQs, I went in and I thanked the, the scores for their time. I left. In the interviews, I sat through all the interviews. I clearly directed the, the firms to not Ask me any questions, any opinion. I'm Lewis Jordan. I'm the director. Thank you for your submittal. I sat. I'm not a part of any of the scoring process. So the, the, the notion that anything other than just human error occurred. And when human error occurred, we stood up and said there was a mistake, being, there was a mistake made in this process. The, team, the scoring team was called back together. And this last firm was given the opportunity to... Um, have its proposal scored and interviewed. That, that's it in a nutshell. We stand by the process, and um, we think it was very transparent, very open, and the score spoke to the strength of, the, of this proposal. Uh, as it relates to the other questions, you know, our, a part of our next phase, assuming you approve this, is around business, business term um, negotiations. 
and there will be times where they'll we'll take the opportunity to look. There's a number of different options as it relates to land and who owns it and things of that nature that we'll have to negotiate through. You know, oftentimes it's common for a land lease. You know, depending on the HUD tool that we're able to use, be it RAD, be it Section 18. So I'm not prepared to say in indefinite what that process, what that ultimate um, piece will look like. But I can assure you that we're going to negotiate and speak in the best interest of the Housing Authority today and in the future. If I could add just a couple of additional points on the process itself. Um, uh, as the facilitator of the process, I want to also uh, ensure the committee that this process was fair and transparent, that there was an error made. It was identified by the Housing Authority and it was rectified. The Evaluation Committee was apprised of this issue and these same concerns came up uh, and we discussed the concerns within the Evaluation Committee and the Evaluation Committee was very clear that they were not uh, at that time accusing the Housing Authority of any malfeasance. We also addressed the fact that even though the proposal was received and scored separately, that we did verify that it was received on time because it was signed for and delivered. And we also verified that the evaluation committee, regardless of any potential or alleged conflict of interest by any of the members, had the complete and total control of which firms that they scored and moved forward for recommendation. And the evaluation committee understanding that still chose to score the way that they did and recommend the Michaels organization as the top scoring firm. Mr. Jordan is absolutely correct. He was an arm's length from every transaction. He did not participate in the discussion nor the scoring. In fact, his role was relegated to introductions and listening and then he left. And I also wanted to add a piece. Uh, it was stated by one of the speakers that uh, everyone was asked to sign a conflict of interest form. And it was also questioned whether Lewis Jordan was, was asked to sign the form. And if you recall, it was just kind of left hanging out there. So the clear answer is yes. I did sign a, a, a conflict of interest form. Meaning to verify the absence of conflicts. Of Absolutely. Interest. Absolutely. As did everyone else. Okay. Uh, any additional? That's it, thank you. Okay, great. I'll bring it back to the commission at this point then and, and see where people are at. Um, any additional either questions or, or remarks uh, or entertain a motion as the case may be? Well, I'd be happy to move this um, item. I think this is an incredibly important decision we're mm -hmm. making today and um, you're embarking on, um, if we approve this, um, a relationship as well as a process that um, is um, going to um, hopefully result in an outcome that all stakeholders and everybody Absolutely. can be proud of at the end. I'm in very impressed with your presentation, um, with the record that you present, um, but it is, it is a, a big task ahead of us. But I. I think what stands out most for me is the emphasis on the people part of this. And, um, and that means your people as well as the members of the community as well as the housing authority and then what's the role that we play. So um, I'm um, happy to move this item and um, we, will be, we will be watching and listening and providing our input and holding you to and the housing authority to and, to the, mem and the members of the community to a commitment to really um, to approach this whole process and this project um, as an opportunity and one that's inclusive and one that all vo in which all voices will be heard. So thank you. Thank you. I'm going to recognize. We have a motion and second. I'm going to recognize one more member of the public who I think I'm is sorry, on late. Come, here come on, up. I have been yeah. attending the, here at the meeting, and I wasn't sure what was going on. My name is Gracie Silver. I'm a resident of the Golden Gate Village, uh, that tenor resident in the public housing. My question is, I have sat here and listened to different people, what they're going to do, what they're not going to do, and, um, and all of that also. But see, I am here concerning the tenants of the public housing. Okay, first of all, I have agree, agree with everybody, what everybody have to say. But what I really got to my question, when Michael got up and started talking, and here it says, uh, Michael is a national residential, and say he, 
she, she take, he take care of everything. Okay, full service, property manager, finances, and structure. Okay, number one. Now, Michael's coming in town now. Michael's gonna help us get uh, the public housing building straightened up. <coughs> but in the meantime, I have been here, I have lived in Marin City almost 70 years. And I have seen, I saw, I saw the building where I live at, been raised, been built, and everything like that. Now I'm asking this question. Okay, here's a history of it. When they built in the headland, they built the headland, built these places. They built these apartments. The first thing they did when they come in here, they got the apartments built up, they told the people who lived in public housing, if you want to move up a little higher, you can move on up. And a lot of the people moved up into the high, high headland in those apartments. And in a year's time, those people was put out of their houses. That's right. Because right, while they put out of their houses, they could not afford the rent. What they were doing, that what they did, they fattened, fattened uh, uh, frogs for snakes. That's yeah. exactly what they were doing. That's right. Okay, now I'm asking Michael now. You all coming in here, you're going to build this, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Now, will you sell us out? Will you take, you're looking at the money, or are you looking at the people? Now, I'm old, but I got the family here that has got to come, all national out of people. Now, That's when right. I come in Marin City, well, you can count on your fingers, there was, you count on your face how many whites, and, and, on, and Marin City was always black. But now, Marin City, it has, it's all nationality people. In my neighborhood, I live in all nationality people. We don't look at what color you are. We look at what, what you can do, and all of us are, let's just say, poor. So I'm asking you all, before Michael Nam goes in and do all their business, Michael, will you come in, help us out, or when in a few years, I may be dead by that time, in a few years you come in and say, well, I'm sorry, but we have to, and then you're going to raise the property up in the high rise right. building up to $1,000, $2,000, And you know good and well, if we come in here poor, we're going to leave out here poor, and half of these children that are growing up here now, they will be poor. Will they be put out of their home because of the greenback dollar? So I'm asking you all, before you all make the decision, ask your conscience in. Am I working for, for the people? Am I working for the pocketbook? And may God bless all of you. And another thing, I hope you, hope you all have a merry, merry Christmas. Thank you, ma'am. And I think speaking for everyone involved, I can say your voice will be ringing in our ears. Absolutely. <laughs> Why don't we get back to the board at this point? Any other? No, I, this is the furthest we've ever gone in, in trying to deal with and trying to help Golden Gate Village. I'm very supportive. I want to thank you for all the work that you have said you're going to do and the cooperation that you have been have with the community. And I'm ready to vote on this. In that case, uh, the vote is upon us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That matter carries. Thank you, everyone. We're really at the beginning of the process. Uh, Director Jordan. Commissioner, if I may, in closing, um, I wanted to speak briefly to some next steps. Um, before the end of the year, we're going to invite the Michaels organization to come back, and we're going to have a holiday meet and greet in Marin City. We'll, we'll give you the time and dates as we will with the public around that. Um, we envision the first part of our year doing um, negotiation of business terms. This is where we'll sit down with, with uh, the Michaels organizations, with attorneys, and we'll really work through a process that's in the best interest, obviously, of the Housing Authority. At the same time, an ongoing, ongoing conversations around Section 3 and other resident-inspired um, initiatives. And then the, the, the fourth thing that I, I'm, I'm very, very hopeful that when we come back to this commission in the first quarter of, uh, of next year, that a lot of the people who showed up today, that we, we, we have more of an active, robust conversation, not just here at the boardroom, but just in the community in general. You know, we want to make sure that we're being inclusive. We want to make sure that people are being heard. So again, you know, I, my, my pledge, my wish, and we're going to do everything we can to engage some of the very people, engage even more some of the very people who came out today and who come out in the past as we work with them to make this robust process 
very inclusive and very successful for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. The Marin Housing Authority Board of Commissioners meeting is adjourned. We are going to take a brief recess and reconvene at the Marin County Board of Supervisors.